Hi, welcome to Conversion Conversations. This is Cameron and I am super excited today because I'm taking a look at Transformers Generations War for Cybertron Kingdom Black Arachnia. And Black Arachnia was a figure that I was super excited to check out because uh, here is Black Arachnia and let me show you what uh, Beast Wars original Black Arachnia looked like over on the right here. Uh, that obviously doesn't look a lot like Black Arachnia. Um, so this is essentially the first time we've gotten a Black Arachnia figure that looked like Season 1 Black Arachnia e at retail, uh, which is super exciting. In addition to that, after playing with her, I think she's my favorite or my second favorite Wave 1 figure. Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to check out the Voyagers or Leader yet, um, but she just does a lot at her price point that I am just super impressed by. So first we have this Black Widow body, which is super nice and compact. The legs obviously are black instead of orange, uh, but I think she compacts down really, really impressively. Uh, for comparison, here is Masterpiece Black Arachnia, which we can see here. Uh, doesn't even compact down quite as well uh, as this one. There's obviously uh, more going on with the transformation at the Masterpiece level. If you want to check out my Masterpiece review, you can. I've already done that video. Uh, but there was additional things happening at this level to get as much screen accuracy as possible. Um, but with the kind of redesigned Season 1 uh, aesthetic that Kingdom is going for, I think Black Arachnia does a ton. In terms of articulation, uh, her, her legs all swivel at a single point at her body, but then each one does have individual swivels here, which is nice. And I think for a spider, that's really all you need, is for her to be able to be creepy and walk around. Uh, and she looks great. Here are our uh, season one Transformer so far. Obviously, this uh, is not all Maximals at this point in time. Uh, she doesn't become a Maximal until uh, season two with the Fusers, I believe, uh, once she meets uh, Silverbolt. But I still think they look real, real great together, and I'm excited to build up this shelf. I finally understand uh, why G1 fans are so adamant about getting the whole lineup because I am super excited to get as much of Season 1 cast as I can, uh, you know, on my shelf in the same toy line. And we're going to go ahead and get into transformation. First thing we're going to do is pop off this crossbow piece. And then I do want to mention, uh, I have seen online, I ha I've been fortunate that it hasn't happened yet, um, but I've seen online a lot of people breaking tabs on Black Arachne, whether it's tabs on the claws or the points of these claws. So it is something that has become apparent in the Transformers uh, Kingdom toy line. Both Cheetor and Black Arachne have uh, some qual uh, quality control issues or maybe it's design issues with tab tolerances. Whatever is going on, I just want to urge everyone to be careful. Uh, I don't want to ignore that part of the review just because I've been lucky and haven't had it happen to me yet. Uh, we can come in and we can bring out her claws and then separate them. They have two tabs that they connect together here and they fold into her feet really smartly. I like that a lot. That's something even the Masterpiece figure didn't uh, do. They, they deal with the feet in a different way, but I just like the way it locks her body down tightly. Uh, that's another thing like that I just really like about her engineering. We can bring out these shoulders, kind of get them out of the way, swivel them so that we uh, don't have to deal with them yet while we work on her legs. We're going to come in and extend out her legs, bring them down away from her thorax. Is that the right word? Thorax? Uh, then her hips can move around her uh, crotch piece, getting things down and out of the way. There we go. So now we can have Black Arachnia at least standing up on her robot legs. The uh, These back pieces, uh, I don't know what you call it, the sides of her thighs, they can compress down a little bit. They, they articulate just a little bit to get in and out of the way and get this thorax looking all nice and clean if possible. Uh, but you can move those uh, out of the way once, once you do so. We can come up top. We're going to pull out on a pin, pull out her shoulders essentially, and then rotate them 90 degrees and recompress them in. And that lets us flip out her 
torso. And I think that's a really cool bit of transformation. Her spider head is going to compress down uh, against the, uh, you know, this crotch piece down here. And it does tab in if we get it just right. Make sure I've got, I'm looking at the right section. And then something should be clicking here. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. And then this backpack folds up nice and against her back. And here we've got Black Arachnia, and she she looks great. I mean, look at look at this. Uh, this is really the first time we've had like there's almost nothing to compare them to. You could kind of compare them to the Masterpiece figure, but they're at such different price points. I don't think that's a fair comparison. The Masterpiece figure, of course, looks uh, much more show accurate to the CGI model from Mainframe. Uh, you can compare her to her original toy, but that was just Tarantulas. Uh, really, this is the first time we've gotten our hands on her. The only other Black Arachnia I have is Beast Machine's Black Arachnia, and that's just a very different character design. Uh, so, so really, she is, to me, uh, Black Arachnia is incomparable. I love that her claws have three-fourths of a five-millimeter port, so she can absolutely hold her crossbow. I love this look. I mean, this is... Uh, Black Arachnia finally in hand, and I think, you know, her backpack is nice and tight and small. Uh, she has all of her femme fatale features. Uh, in terms of articulation, uh, we've got good articulation on the neck. It's a double joint in there. The shoulders, they go, you know, more than 90 degrees with the way these shoulder cuts work, and they can 360, no problem. Uh, we do get bicep swivel. Uh, we actually get technically two points of bicep swivel because of the way her spider arms work. Um, we've got 90 degree bend. We can do it backwards also if you need the weird articulation. The claws don't go open or close. That's something on the masterpiece level that I get that just couldn't happen at this price point. She is super flexible. Uh, she can do deep knee bends because of her transformation. She's got a double jointed knee. She's got thigh swivel. She does have that Earthrise Warfare Cybertron tilt. So she can, you know, be all menacing and ready to go. And I think she just looks incredible. The only thing I really care about comparing her to is her line mates. So we'll take a look at them. And here she is with Cheetor, who you may remember from the show, harbored a kind of schoolboy crush on her. And here she is with Rat Trap, who never really got around to trusting her, even though, uh, even though he and Dinobot as a former Decepticon got along uh, very well as good friends towards the end. Um, but yeah, like this just, oh, this is exciting. I, uh, Cheetor, your feet are just slightly too small, I feel. Um, it's just super exciting to have her in hand. Uh, right now, in terms of season one cast, my favorite representations are Black Arachnia, Rat Trap, then Cheetor. Uh, Cheetor, I think, is just serviceable. Uh, but Black Arachnia is incredible. Even if you're not a fan of Beast Wars, it's just cool what they were able to make her do at her price point, I think. Uh, other than that, uh, that's it for uh, this uh, set of characters. We'll take a look at some more of the Wave 1 Deluxes next time. And thanks for hanging out, everyone. Have a great day. See ya!